Hello everyone, my name is Quamia Ross and today I'm making a video called Expose the Mayfield Heights School District. Now, I made a video recently called Expose Enrichment Heights Local School District and I suggest if you haven't looked at that one to check that video out as well. It actually starts from that video and it will give you more background into this video because I will not go into much detail in this video. A lot of the things that happened to my children at the Richmond Heights School District happened at Mayfield. Now I will say that Mayfield Heights it wasn't as severe and it's probably because our time did not last as long there but a lot of the same similar circumstances that we faced with Richmond Heights were, were going on at the Mayfield Heights School District as well. Now you might feel that this video doesn't affect you at all and you might feel like or, or dismiss it like it's not important but this happened to my child okay this happened to both my children and it's happening to children all over America God already revealed this to me and opened my eyes the Holy Spirit showed me that it's not just my children who are being affected and that's why I'm making these videos I'm being obedient to God to bring awareness because the kingdom of darkness needs to be exposed the evil and wickedness that are going on in our school systems especially the, the public schools. They're also going on other schools, private schools as well, but it's majority going on predominantly in the public schools. It needs to be exposed because our children are being destroyed. And I talk about in these videos about how the bullying, how they have bullying, pitting children up against the other children, uh, letting children get bullied and teased and mistreated, pretending that they don't see it. Um, some kids have wanted to commit suicide and hurt themselves. Uh, some kids become withdrawn. They label children with having behavioral issues when they started off as good children. It talks about all this. So I really suggest that you look at all these videos and, re and watch them in its entirety and go into it with an open mind. A lot of these things might sound strange to you. It might be something that you are not used to or accustomed to and that you are not, you know, privy to believe but I'm asking you that you ask the Lord let the allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you and open your eyes and get spiritual discernment ask God for spiritual discernment and go into this with an open mind now I'm continuing off from the Richmond Heights local school district video and me and my children had to move out of that school that school district we were now in the Mayfield Heights school district and uh, we were supposed to go my children were supposed to go to Lander Elementary according to where we lived but they felt due to my children's test scores and their IEP that the center elementary school would best benefit them and it was further in Mayfield it serviced the Psalm Center and Mayfield Village location and this was a predominantly white school with predominantly white children the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of this has to do with underlying racism uh, the way they're treating our children in these schools um, a lot of this is due to you know a, a lot how they're mistreating the the minority children so I do want to put an emphasis on that, that a lot of this is, is working out of underlying racism and they're mainly targeting black males. Some of, they don't want us to, to thrive. They don't want certain uh, groups of people to succeed and it needs to be addressed. It can't be something that's covered up. A lot of people feel like, oh, it's over. No, it's not over. I mean, it might've been more overt, but now at a point it, it's something covert and it's hidden and they're using the supernatural world and occult to, to continue to oppress our people and we're not even uh, you know aware of it. We're oblivious to what's going on so the lord has allowed me to go to all these different locations to open my eyes and we have encountered schools all over ohio and, and pennsylvania and it's not just happening in ohio cleveland ohio or harrisburg pennsylvania it's the, as the lord showed me it's happening all over the country of america and probably in other countries as well but i'm not sure of that but again just go into this video and please look at it with an open mind now i'm going to start off talking about the experiences of my son because i have experiences for both my children I'm going to start off with my son first and go over his experience at Center Elementary and then I'm going to go over the experience I had with my daughter. Now, when I first started the school, everyone was welcoming as usual. Everyone was nice and everything appeared to be great. And this is something you have to watch out for because I don't know if you ever watched these movies where people go to this place where everybody seems so good and everything's so perfect and it seems so good to be true. It usually is because when you really pull back that veil, there's a lot of evil that's way in the background and, and you really see it. I, I would go back to that movie called Stepford Wives or something like that and everything seemed so great. All the, the, the women were perfect and then you turn around and see that they were actually robots or something like that. It was something crazy and bizarre. So that's what it was like here. They opened, they welcomed us. Everything seemed so great. They gave us a tour around the school and asked, helped us with anything we needed. And they really seemed to really want, you know, my kids to succeed. I thought, oh, this, this place is great. It's much better than Richmond Heights. I, I was so happy and like, oh, I really, I'm glad I found this school. But you know, things were, I, I didn't really know better at that time. I didn't understand what was going on. So everyone gave us good reports about my kids. I got a lot of positive feedback as usual from the teachers. They said my children were well behaved. Uh, my children were following directions well. Both my children were catching on to the work and there were no problems. As usual, there were no problems. So one day 
uh, let me go ahead and pull this up because I, I kind of want to get this name right. But one day, and I was very hands-on involved. I attended some of the Board of Education meetings. I volunteered at the school, and they allowed me to do this stuff. I would volunteer for the parties and things like that. So I, as I got a chance to later on volunteer and take pictures, you would see different things going on. I would saw how my son was feeling isolated and, and just wasn't being treated right. Now, I, I'm not sure his name. I think it was Christopher De Marino or something like that. He was a special education supervisor, head of special education, who I worked closely with. He would help with my children getting the curriculum and everything else. And so he came to me one day and suggested that I sign up for some of their services that they were being offered through Beachbrook. They had some type of partnership with Beachbrook, which was some type of behavioral health uh, organization. They worked with children and counseled them. And, you know, I didn't understand why he was offering that. I didn't feel like they needed it. Everyone said my child was fine. He'd had counseling therapy before, you know, through outside agencies. So, you know, he felt that it would be good for my kid. He said, you know, this would be a good fit for him. And, you know, just check it out that they work with all the other children. He made it sound really good. So I'm like, okay, you can set up the appointment. He says, my insurance will cover everything. That's what he said right away. Don't worry about it. your insurance. will take care of it. And so I went to this meeting and, you know, I sat down to speak with this woman. Her name was Mrs. Meddleson. And she had told me something about, she was talking to me, telling me how she graduated from Ohio State University and just introducing herself and giving me a lot of background feedback about herself and what she does and how she works with the children. And now during this meeting, I started having a headache out of nowhere. It just, just came on and, and it was excruciating to the point where it was, I was, it was unbearable and I could barely focus on the meeting because of this headache I was having. And I sat there and she was, you know, giving me all this background information, telling me how she performs the services, how she'll go in the classrooms and observe the children. And sometimes she'll take them off the school campus and, and go on a trip with them to the library or to the playground. She was really, you know, wanting me to sign up for these services. And I did not feel comfortable and I did not feel like I wanted her around my child. I just something about it and I did not want it. So I said, you know what? I declined the services politely and I said, you know, I don't feel that this is something my son needs at this time. So I left it at that and I went home. Now, a couple days later, my son, who was very observant at the time, even though he was young, he was only like probably seven years old or something like that, he was very observant, and he kind of, you know, he, he was smart. He, he, he observed things, he, he kind of, he, he saw what was going on, he paid attention to things around him, and, and he was like me, he kind of knew when something didn't rub him right about a person. So... He came home and told me, he says, you know, that, that woman, Mrs. Meddleson, you were talking to, she was in my classroom today and she kept staring at me. I says, really? What, did she say anything to you? What did she want? He says, no, she didn't say anything to me. She just stood there, kept staring at me. So I thought it was odd. So I didn't think anything else of it. So he came home again the next day and said she was in the classroom again watching him. I says, well, I, I, I wanted to talk to the teacher about it. So I'm like, well, because I know I had declined the service and I'm wondering why is she in there? Is she trying to observe my son and go go ahead with, you know, these these this therapy, even though I told her I didn't want it. So I was a little curious about that. Now, then my son started coming home complaining about headaches. He started complaining about headaches, and he was getting ill. So at first, we thought it was because he needed glasses, because I took him to the eye doctor and said he needed glasses. And I'll post here an email where I had with his teacher, Nicolette McLaws, where she confirms that he was having headaches, and, and she asked about the glasses because we were waiting for his glasses to come. We thought it was because of him needing glasses, but it really wasn't, because he was getting these headaches before back in Richmond Heights. Also, after my son got his glasses, the headaches continued. So it was not because of him needing glasses. He was actually being attacked. It was the same uh, situation that was happening at the previous school where his brain and mind was being attacked. They were working on his frontal lobe, affecting his behavior, affecting his thinking and everything else. And the, t the, the all these people were revealing to me then that, you know, it took a while, but he was revealing, finally revealed to me that they were attacking his frontal lobe, his brain and causing things. So a, a lot of time in our brain, we have different parts of our brain. If you know, we have the frontal lobe, the occipital lobe, the parietal lobe, and all these things, the temporal lobe. Now the frontal lobe deals with erratic behavior. It deals with uh, impulses. It helps you make, you know, rational decisions. If your frontal lobe is destroyed, you're going to act on an impulse, meaning you're going to do something without thinking about it. You're not going to think about the consequences. You're just going to blindly do something and you're not going to be able to rationalize or, or make any type of, uh, pertinent decisions or prudent decisions when it comes to things you're not able to anal analyze you're not going to have analytical abilities your cognitive skills are kind of destroyed and the frontal lobe deals with behavior also 
So my son was always acting erratic, impulsive behavior. Now, we're going to go back to, uh, now my son, all of a sudden, I started getting calls home from the teacher. Calls home about his behavior. The same thing that happened at Richmond Heights. We were okay at first, but now all of a sudden, you know, we were getting calls. Every day there was a problem. My son had, I found out that he had punched a girl. I was actually, you know, mortified. The principal called me and said my son punched another student. It was a female. So we came in and had a talk. He said my son was going to have a suspension uh, for the entire week throughout his recess. He would miss his recess and sit in the uh, office with the principal. So I was ashamed. I apologized uh, at the time the principal and the special education uh, Per, the board, the head of special education was there as well. And I just didn't understand how, you know, all of a sudden my, my son's behavior changed. And now this was happening at Richmond Heights, the same thing. So I, I started consulting God. I started praying and I asked my son, why did you hit that girl? At first he didn't understand why. He didn't know why. He didn't have an answer. He said he didn't know. So then he finally said, because she looked at him. So I... I, I, I reprimanded him and I was upset and told him how to keep his hands on himself because I had always taught my kids that they knew not to touch anybody else or if there was an issue that they knew to go to an adult and let them know. So after I kind of got on my son and reprimanded him about that, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that it was actually the Mrs. Meddleson who were in that, that classroom staring at him, fixating on him who caused these to happen. They were all um, doing attacks on my son because they wanted me to go back and renege on my decision to to. to for him not to have the therapy. They wanted me to go forth and have the therapy and change my mind. So they wanted me to feel that, oh, my son's such, his behavior is so out of control that he needs this this these, these, this therapy. And so I started praying. The Holy Spirit, I started praying every day for my kid. I was praying against the attacks and he was always getting sick. He was always having headaches. And I was praying and asking God, you know, deal with this woman, deal with everything. So I finally had my last straw when, okay, my kid started becoming withdrawn. Once again, he was he gone. For, he went from being happy to withdrawn and, and feeling sad. And I will post pictures here because I went to certain events. Like I said, I will volunteer at events, and you can see my son just not engaging with the children, feeling lonely. And not only that, he 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 was saying that I would see other children moving around, and he felt oppressed. And this is a lot of things they do. They oppress our children, especially black males. I've seen it before at Richmond High School where they'll let, you know, the Caucasian boys run around and play and be active and be a, be a child. But then they have all the black boys sitting down, tell them not to get up or no, don't even talk during lunchtime when lunchtime is where you're supposed to express yourself. I went to school and we talked and played around at lunchtime. We did whatever. You, you Lunch and recess was, was our time to let out all the energy and everything we had by sitting, you know, confined to a desk for hours. And so they, it's like they oppress our children. They want them to feel like they're in a prison. And this is the thing why I'm talking about because America is like they want to oppress the black race. They're still doing it, and they're doing it in different subtle ways that are not, you know, a, a, a clearly known or obvious to the rest of the world. And they're attacking our children's brains in these schools. They're attacking them, taking the knowledge out of them because they want certain children not to thrive. They want certain groups of children to not have any success. So when a child's brain is messed up, for one, when he his mind is messed up, when you're attacking his mind and his, his knowledge, when you're giving him impulsive behavior and all of a sudden he keeps getting in trouble, he's labeled a problem child, he's making bad decisions, where's his life going to head? It's not many places his life can head, okay? He'll be either, you know, in prison, he'll either head to prison or, you know, sometimes he can end into a life of crime. There's really not many places he can go. So that's what the thing is, is they're trying to pretty much keep certain races, a group of people, mainly the black race, they're targeting to keep them from having any type of success. Now, I quickly wanna add this side note because I am not trying to imply or bring forth a consensus that black children do not act out and that my child was some sort of angel. What I do wanna bring attention to is the fact that discipline in the schools have been very biased. If you are gonna discipline or, or bring forth consequences against uh, African-American male or African-American child for certain negative behavior, then the same should stand for a Caucasian child, not you allowing that child to get away with something or saying you didn't see the behavior when it came from a Caucasian child or a certain specific individual but then when you have a, a African-American male child over here you punish them for everything now also 
since some of these children do have disabilities and different personalities and attitudes, we should also be disciplining them and treating them in a way where they can understand, where they can learn, not a one size fits all. You should be customized according to the person's disability, the child's abilities. And I feel like that's where the schools have been dropping the ball. And they have, as I've seen it before, been a lot more lenient and tolerant when it comes to a Caucasian student or a Caucasian male or, or even sometimes a female child versus when it comes to African-American males, they want to come forth. It's, it seems as if they want to bring forth control and say, okay, this child is a certain way that they want to get them in control. And, and this is how they've done it. And this is destroying the children is bringing forth negativity that is causing destruction to the children. That is a side note I want to bring forth. They don't want the black people in America to thrive, especially the black men, because this all starts with the white supremacy and white man being in fear of the black man and fear of the black race and they want to keep them in prison they want to keep them locked up and out of line because you know men is men man are man are supposed to be the leader they don't too much care about the black women but man is supposed to be a leader so the problem is they're fighting against the control and, and, and they, they want to lead and, and control everything so they're, they've co come devised this plan to attack our children, especially in their early age to keep us from thriving to keep the black race from thriving so this is what the Lord has been showing me so they, they, they start in school where they, they emasculate them in school. They break them down to be, you know, bound to not be free. They break you down or they'll label you certain ones in different, different graphics. They'll label you as a problematic child or they'll prepare you for prison. And I've actually talked to people who actually confirmed this. Educated people know that certain groups of black males, they're already preparing prisons for them when they're in school. As early as probably kindergarten or first grade, they're preparing them for prison. And that is what they're doing. So... I I decided to take my kid out of school because one day I, I went to pick them up. I would pick my kids up for school because they were having problems on the school bus. So this is another thing. My child was getting teased on the bus. My son was getting teased by other children. No one said anything. I would report it and, and nothing, nothing would be resolved. They couldn't seem to do anything about it. So I took my kids off the school bus and I started taking them to and from school. I would take them, drive them to school in the morning and pick them up in the evening and in, in the afternoon. So one day I picked my son up and he had such a distressed look on his face. He looked like he was ready to burst into tears. And I said, what's wrong? He said, his head had been hurting him all day. I said, why didn't you go to the nurse? Why didn't you have the nurse call me? He says, I did. I told her to, to call you. She wouldn't. So they basically had my son sitting there all day in pain, suffering. Now, when I took my kid home, immediately, as soon as we walked in the door, immediately he just vomited on the floor. Now, I don't know. When I was pregnant, I used to have migraines so bad to the point where I would vomit. So imagine a child, your head would have to hurt very intensely. If you've ever had migraines, you know how painful that is. And then it causes you to start vomiting. If you ever had some type of headache, that is excruciating pain. Where you sitting there and your head is hurting so badly that you end up vomiting. I was disgusted. So the next day I went to the superintendent's office and I withdrew my son from school. Now I kept my daughter there because at the time she was having, she was doing okay. Like I said, a lot of the focus wasn't on her, but she was a, a you know, a, a, a black female. A lot of times the target was with my son. I noticed that it was kind of my daughter's experience was different from my son's, but eventually the, the, the kingdom of darkness started targeting my daughter as well because of who, who I was in the spiritual realm. The kingdom of darkness knows who you are in the spiritual realm and they're going to come against God's children. So my daughter, her, her experience started off. Okay. You know, she had friends. Well, there was this particular one little girl who was kind of gravitating towards her and she liked her. She was a disabled child. These are just, a lot of them were disabled children. Some of them were normal, but some of them were special because they had a, a blended class with, you know, it was a small blended class. So my daughter would come home and tell me, you know, that she felt that this girl was bothering her. Now, let, let's give you a history of my daughter, her, her disability. She was diagnosed from University Hospitals of Cleveland with selective mutism and microcephaly, even though we always felt that she was on an autism spectrum because of the certain traits and characteristics that she had, but they said she did not have autism. Now, when I went to a hospital in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, they did write on the diagnosis that she had autism. Now, my daughter hated to have people in her space. She liked to have her space. She didn't want people around her all the time. She didn't like a lot of noise. She didn't like to be in uh, environments where a bunch of people were crowded around her. She, she, she did not like those kind of things. It made her feel uncomfortable. And so she kind of liked to go off and play by herself. And so we were trying to get her to be more open and then have friends and play with other kids. And so I was trying to get her to, to, to see other people are different. I said, so, you know, well, she says the girl keeps bothering her. She's always around her. I says, well, you know, she might be, you know, have an issue. And I was trying to get my child to accept people with different, you know, traits. We all have 
issues and problems and I didn't want her to shun anyone or reject anyone to learn how to cope and deal with certain people and, and to be tolerant as long as, you know, the person isn't hurting them or, or doing something wrong to them. But my daughter, she didn't like it. She said the girl was always there, always around her. And when she got on the swing, the girl was there pushing her on the swing. She was always around her, underneath her, sitting next to her. And she said the girl was bothering her. She was problematic. She didn't, it was annoying. She said the girl was annoying. And so, you know, I, I contacted the teacher and let her know, you know, could you kind of separate my daughter and so-and-so because she spills that, you know, the girl's being problematic and bothering her. And so you could tell the teacher a little thing. She said, well, they're, they're best friends. That The girl loves her and they're always together. And I said, you know, but Cherish feels, my daughter feels she's, that's, it's getting on her nerves. And I was trying to be nice about it. I wasn't trying to be rude because we've dealt with this before. You could tell the teacher was a little offended sometimes, you know, this girl had been to school for a while before my kids had gotten there. And sometimes teachers already have their favorites. So you could tell she didn't really like it. So I didn't want my child to be retaliated against because I know what happened before. And as I can go over a lot of times with these people, if you say anything to them and lots of, this is why a lot of children don't speak up about things that are happening. Or sometimes the parents don't, because when you do, oftentimes the administration, the teachers, they'll uh, retaliate and try to make your life, the rest of your school year, a living hell, or even the rest of your time at that school period. And so I talk about this. It's like the spirit of pride. This can fall in three different places, the spirit of pride, the spirit of Jezebel, and the spirit of rejection. If you cannot take criticism or you can't take someone telling you something, you get easily offended. You, you, there's a spirit of rejection that you're dealing with or a spirit of pride. And a lot of times these people, these teachers have these spirits that, that they're dealing with and they get angry and they don't know how to resolve certain issues or, or deal with any type of constructive criticism or any type of feedback at all. And they'll get mad and retaliate against our children. So... My daughter somehow, I don't know, she did something and she won something. She was one of the best students. I forgot what it was because this was so long ago. Now, she ended up getting, one of the teachers gave her some type of big piece of, it's a big sucker, big candy or something. It was huge. And she brought it home. She was happy. She's like, oh, look at this. I got this. I won this today. I was like, oh, wow, look at that. And we were happy. And it's like when she first had gotten into school and, and she ate the candy. She ate some of the candy and she started complaining about her throat being sore. And so I put two and two together and I threw the candy away and said, you know what? I, I don't want you eating anything else anyone gives you. I'm going to start packing your lunch. I'm going to take your stuff to school. I'm going to pack your lunch. Because the Holy Spirit was opening my eyes to how the kingdom of darkness was infecting and contaminating food. If you look back in the Bible, everything that Satan does is not something that just occurred. This is history repeating itself. And they would sacrifice food to the idols and they would eat food sacrificed to idols. It always warned us in the Bible, do not eat food sacrificed to idols. And sacrificed to idols mean that these people pray over this food. Sometimes they, spirits will be inserted into this food or curses will be placed on this food that will have an adverse effect against those who are eating it. And so this is what was going on. This is going on in jobs, it's going on in schools and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to this. So my daughter ate this food and she became ill. So I told her after that, you know what, no more. So they were having snack time at the school. They had snack time every day where they would eat a snack that the parents bring in at a certain time. Now I would send my daughter uh, a zip black, a zip block bag filled with cheese it crackers and everything because it was her favorite snack. She loved cheese it crackers. And so I would send that with her in her backpack every single day to school so she could have to eat at snack time. Now the teacher started urging her to have an entire box sent in the classroom to stay there so she could just issue the snacks there. I, I didn't understand why she needed a box there. So my daughter would come home and say, my teacher, her, Nicoletta McLossick was her name, she says, my teacher wants me to bring home a box of snacks. She wants you to bring the snacks to the school. She wants to keep it there at the school. I says, you don't need to keep your snacks there. I can send the snacks to you every day, every single day. And so my daughter went back to school. I, I kept sending her her individual snacks every day. So she came back home again and can urged me to bring the snacks. She says, my teacher wants the snacks. And so my daughter wanted to follow the rules. She, you know, that's just how she was. And so just to make her feel at ease, I went against my own judgment and I went out and bought a brand new box of cheese and crackers and I put it in her backpack and sent it to school. So the teacher began issuing the snacks to my daughter every day from the box that I had at the school. My daughter suddenly started coming home complaining about illnesses. Her stomach was hurting her. She wasn't feeling well. I would get calls while my ch ch daughter was in school, calls from the nurse that she was vomiting. She had threw up at, at lunchtime. She had went in the bathroom, she was vomiting, she was sick. Now this was happening every day. She was having intense stomach pain. She was vomiting all the time. And all of this, I didn't know what was going on until finally it dawned on me when the Holy Spirit brought back into my attention that it was the cheese and crackers that we sent to the school. 
So we took her to the doctor and everything. There was nothing to be done. I was praying against praying for my child's stomach. Sometimes she would feel better. Then all of a sudden it would happen again. And this woman was giving her the crackers every day. So, you know, I decided, you know, what, since this was going on, that I would withdraw my child from school because I knew they were attacking her because we were actually, my daughter was missing so much school because of her sickness. She, that's when she first started getting spiritually ill. And I'm going to talk about this continuing on in the series, but these things are happening. And it's time that the church wakes their eyes up because, you know, it can't just be one person fighting. It can't just be one little small group of people fighting. And like I said, I will go off this scripture over and over. The scripture in the Bible says, my people perish, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are destroyed. The enemy is destroying God's children because we are not aware. We are oblivious to the kingdom of darkness and their tactics and things they're doing. They're in these schools attacking our children. They're destroying their brains. They're pitting other children up against them, causing bullying behaviors. And, and, and a lot of times they're isolating our children, doing this deconstructive things that destroy them at a young age. Children are the greatest in God's kingdom. So do not think that the devil will not find a plan and devise a plan to target the children. So it's time that the world begins to pray. It's time that the church comes together to pray, seek spiritual knowledge and pray. And I hope that this video has brought some type of enlightenment to you. If it has, please share it. Thank you.